Check out this coil spring. Look at the size of that sucker. That is some serious coil spring. It's from a train car. And it had one more spring inside of it. Rides with three springs. All this rail here is from 1919. I drove all over the place this week to pick it up. And that'll be what we're making axes from as soon as the 1908 is finished. Which actually, I still have a couple axes available on my website. And then that will be the very end of 1908. So if you're thinking about getting an ax year 1908, grab it. Because once it's gone, it's gone. But for now, we're going to head into the shop, start working on the upsetter. Okay, so I'm over here at the upsetter. And uh, you've seen this thing a million times, I know. And what I noticed on using it on this batch of axes, this is getting better, but it's still sort of sticky in here. And that really makes it impossible to find control it. So I'm thinking that we should just quickly open this thing up and see if we can clean it out a little bit. I mean, we could take it off. Bit of a chunky chunk. Definitely manageable. Let's open it up and see what we can do here. So there's just a piston in there. But it looks like it's made to come apart really easy because of all those cotter pins and stuff. So I'm just going to look at this a bit here and see if we can just pull it apart and see this big plug on the bottom. I think I can get that out. Let's just see if we can get this thing off without much drama. If it gets big, then we'll rethink it here. So it's an inch and a half. Looking for some inch and a half here. Some little short piece. Hmm. All right, let's see if this thing fits. What is going on? All right, let's see what we can do here. See if this is gonna work or this is like the... Oh, sweet. You can see right down now, so I think I just gotta take those two cotter pins off. I can drop the whole valve out, which is awesome. I just love it when things were made to be repaired and simply to. And just start by taking this off here and seeing what that gets us. Oh yeah, look at that. That's awesome. Oh, cool. We got something here. We got a spring. And I uh, should watch. Oh, there you go. Easy peasy. Okay, cool. So this is uh I find it interesting. Let me show you what's going on here. So this washer here has these two spots in it. So it sits in this groove so it can't rotate. And then they've got these springs in there. So that puts pressure this way, which puts pressure on this and is ultimately keeping the shaft tight like that so that this doesn't go like that on the inside there. So it keeps it all tight like that. I think the problem is, is actually the valve just sticky to the sides because if you look at it, you see how slow it drops. I think it's just full of dirty oil. I think it just needs to be cleaned. Man, I wonder if I could even just hit that up with enough WD-40 to wash it out. Because everything is good enough that I don't want to go in here do any like repair work on anything because it actually looks pretty good. I'm just going to grab a whole bunch of WD-40 and see if I can just wash down the inside of this cylinder. Uh, I'll show you here what I'm looking at. Maybe you can see it better. So you can see the wall there. I think that's the problem. It's just super dirty. So let's just try cleaning it out first before we take anything apart and see if that'll be good enough. All right, so I got the uh, parts just a little bit cleaned up here. So I'm gonna put that back on like that. I was able to actually get the springs to uh, sort of come out and be more active. So that's cool too. Working quite a bit better now. Oh yeah, baby. That's nice. Okay, let's throw some air on this thing and see how it works.
the uh, window of on and off is extremely small. I, I feel like, like it's a lot better, right? For sure it is. But it's still really hard to be, well, it's hard to be controlled. I think this one's a whole lot easier. I'm gonna just fire it up just to compare it. All right, now this one feels like home over here, you know? Oh, look at that, hey? So that's, that's where the on is. But you can be like, you can actually like stop it. Yeah, it's really hard. It's just like a race car, this one wants to go. That's very interesting that you can actually uh, like stop it like that, like it's almost stuck. Wondering if that's because there's still a lot of grease and grunge in this one, like it hasn't been worked a lot, and that maybe the column will get better. Definitely not like it's unusable. I'm gonna use it for the uh, next axis I'm building, and then, ah, uh, <sighs> wouldn't it be fun to pull it apart? All right, so I've actually been spending some time looking at axe steps and processes. I was just writing it out to figure out how much more tooling I have to build. So I'm going to start working on this one. We've seen this before. I just want to add a block underneath it and then another profiling. This is to get the profile here. So what I'm going to be doing here is uh, this is going to get welded on the bottom. This will become one piece essentially. I'm just going to machine a notch in that so the upsetter can grip it. You'll see how that works later. Axit's in like this and then I need to fill this gap up to this line here with steel. That is this profile comes up and then has a notch again up here so the upsetter can grip it. So this piece is inch and a half by two. I don't have any material like that so I think I'm just going to quickly cut another piece off like this except bigger and then just forge it down under the power hammer. Here's the chunk and the bottom. So now I just got to make this match that. I probably could have done some pre-work on the forging, but I didn't. So I'll just grind it now. Look at this. It's not quite right because it's just so tight overall length, the same as the ax. So I'm going to actually stick it back on the forge and try to get this a little bit longer. And I might even just do some pre-shape on it then. So back to the forge. Okay, that should be done. Pretty excited to get that in the upsetter and try it out. Just gonna check it here one more time. So that's all gonna work in like that, essentially. Looks good, I think we got it. Let's put it in. Okay, so I'm just over here at the upsetter just to get this tooling in. And now what's going on is that shoulder there, this part sits like that. And then this clamp is gonna come on top of it right like that, but I just need to machine off this part so it just sits at the right height. We'll cut it back here. So I'm just gonna measure that out and we'll go from there. Got these guys all trimmed up. And now we're just gonna uh, 
see how this all works for us. Let's give this thing a test here. See if I can enter it. Okay, there you go. That's wild, man. That's awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks for watching. Make sure to grab a 1908 hatchet if you're interested in that, because once they're gone, they are gone. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.